So it's been a couple of days since I actually posted a video on here for a couple of different reasons. But without getting into those, let's just get into the major news, shall we? So as many of you are already aware, Sony gave their official stats for the PlayStation 5 earlier today, or yesterday or so. And as far as they are concerned, they confirmed the solid state drive rumor, a custom AMD built GPU, complete with ray tracing capabilities, a custom AMD built processor with up to 256 bit native instruction, as well as audio improvements. But as this is primarily a virtual reality channel, let's go into how each of these are going to improve your uh, virtual reality experience, shall we? So let's start with that solid state drive, shall we? It's going to come with 825 gigabytes of space and 5.5 gigabytes per second track time. It will also allow for access of external hard disk drives the same way the PlayStation 4 does. In addition to this, it will support certain M2 solid states that you'll be able to connect through an existing I.O. port through an onboard bay. However, the primary caveat there is that not only is there no standard height for M2 drives, but also the secondary solid state must, must also be in excess of the 5.5 gigabytes. Thankfully, PCI Express 4 will likely be in excess of this by year's end, and Sony will be testing a number of them throughout the coming months so that they will have a, well, it won't be a cumulative list, but it will be some kind of list of solid states that you'll be able to connect to the PlayStation 5 in order to extend that space. In addition to that, load times will be hundreds of times faster, eliminating the need for install as we know them. How does this connect to virtual reality, you may be asking? Because the, uh, excuse me, because the load times are going to be considerably faster, that's going to result in far, far more frames per second, giving you that competitive edge you may be needing in maybe Gran Turismo Sports or Bravo Team or Firewall, depending on what shooter or racer you decide to go with. In addition to that, you'll be able to play Beat Saber far faster, far easier, and you will be able to, well, it, you'll be able to play the game that much easier if you're using this solid state drive. Now, let's go on to the GPU's capabilities and how they make a better virtual reality experience, shall we? With backwards compatibility considered a must, AMD has constructed a custom-built RDNA 2 processor complete with cache scrubbers, ray tracing, and the logic and feature set present in the PlayStation 4 brought forward into the PlayStation 5. This has allowed the library of at least the top 100 PlayStation 4 games to be brought forward into the PlayStation 5 generation. While that list in itself is not extensive nor is it conclusive, there may be games that are not on that list which are in fact going to be playable when the system launches this holiday season. As a part of the improvements to the GPU, the geometry engine they added is capable of boosting the capabilities of the GPU, thus increasing frame rates and giving you a far better and far more competitive edge when you're playing maybe Gran Turismo Sport or Bravo Team or maybe even uh, Firewall, depending on what type of game it is you want to play in VR. In addition to that, the primitive shaders that they added are capable of adding the geometry, all the little triangles and stuff, while it's being rendered in order to create a smoother experience while you're either turning or moving forward, or maybe even behind you. In addition to that, it's capable of smoothly varying the level of detail, creating a more visually appealing landscape and one that is more capable of adding a level of depth and immersiveness that is 
previously not capable of being done on the PlayStation 4. In addition to that, the improvements to procedural detail adds more gradual contrast, uh, allowing that sort of uh, lack of detail, should I say, that provides that same level of immersiveness I just touched on. In addition to this, it's also capable of allowing for a better use of other special effects, such as background lighting and shading. However, uh, that the capabilities of the GPU have been capped at 2.23 gigahertz with 10.3 teraflops of graphical processing power at their fingertips. The possible uses for the ray tracing effect that was capable from the GPU itself had possible uses included in audio, such as what Microsoft is planning on using it for, as well as global illumination, improved shadows, and reflection, just to name a couple. However, those ones are going to require up to hundreds of millions of rays used per second. But the processing power, not only from the GPU, but the CPU as well, are going to provide that very same level of power that are going to be used in a couple of the launch titles that we can expect for the PlayStation 5. The CPU itself will be capable of up to 256-bit native instruction, allowing for more complex instruction like, say, improved tracking in the updated headset, or powering the audio improvements that we'll be able to see in the upcoming console. While the frequency itself is going to be capped at 3.5 GHz, that is, of course, going to be part of a constant power solution. So, as instead of keeping a jet engine locked up near your TV, the processing speed itself is going to vary, so anything less than 3.5, it, it, may, it may go as low as maybe 3.1 or 2.3, depending on the needs of the processors themselves. However, any, pro any unused power from the CPU will of course be sent to the GPU, powering the ray tracing or whatever other graphical processes are being done by the GPU at that point in time. Complete immersion in the virtual world would not be possible without sound. While the rumor about the Dolby Atmos system inclusion was not accurate, Sony is still aiming to improve the audio for the PlayStation 5 over the PS4, be it through headsets, simply through the TV or surround sound systems that you may have sprawled up around your house. They're doing this primarily through head-related transfer functions, or how your inner ear actually hears everything that happens around you. As part of this presentation that they hosted earlier today, they did, they showed a couple different examples. One was a default map that they're planning on using over the beginning period of the PlayStation 5's life cycle. The second was that of Mark Cerny, the head architect as, and the, excuse me, the leader of the presentation itself. As a part of said presentation, they showed just how different his was as compared to the default that they are going to be using. And in addition, they showed just how different a lot of the examined values, those of the other architects, other engineers, were as, as compared to the default that they are going to be using. Those results were skewed quite a bit and varied over a massive range. However, one of the things he touched on was that 
they do plan on including the range of the community itself in some method o over the coming months or years. Whether it's through sending maps of, of your head or taking a picture of your inner ear in order to be able to map said system in the future. However, the most likely method that they will end up using is likely a free app that you'll be able to download on your, onto your PlayStation 5 in order to improve the auditory response of all of the other PlayStation 5 apps and games that you'll be able to use following that release. But either way, that in itself is going to improve, as I said, the immersiveness of your virtual reality experience. And that is something to be able to look forward to, obviously, when the PlayStation 5 launches this holiday. As if improvements to the PlayStation VR landscape was not enough, we can expect a brand new music pack to Beat Saber to be added on the 26th of this month to include five songs from Timberland with collaborations to include Common Strangers, Kara, Cadence, Bruno Martini, Nash Overstreet, Sid Tipton, and Waves Wave. Like I said, the pack itself will be available for $8 or $2 per song and include five songs in total. So, if you guys want even more music for Beat Saber, regardless of what platform you play it on, you can find it on the 26th of this month. And if you want to do something more beneficial with your time, NVIDIA is calling on all PC owners to download the Folding at Home application, which you can find the link to in the description down below. So that you too can help map and potentially end the coronavirus once and for all. If you guys want to support me, blah, 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 Facebook, blah, 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 YouTube, blah, blah. But if you guys want to do something more courageous, something more giving, something that will actually net you some good karma at the end of the day. Just head on over to HumbleBundle.com. They have all kinds of bundles on different kinds of stuff, whether it's TV, books, music, games, whatever. Not only is that stuff discounted, but a lot of the stuff you end up getting from there will support a charity. The, month, the featured charity this month is called Child's Play which improves the lives of children in hospitals and other childcare facilities through the power of play. So regardless of what you decide to get, should you decide to get anything from that website, you will be supporting a charity in doing so. So I, I personally think that's really cool. So the, the link to that website is in the description down below. Just head on over there and pick something up for yourself.